Hello guys and welcome back to the FCG YouTube channel. My name is Matthias and today we have a special video for you guys. As many of you may already know, starting from April 1st, we have a new balanced and a new master of a master of 5. So we are entering a completely new unexplored format. Even the OCG hasn't had a chance to test out the new master rule as they usually do. So we can't use their meta game to predict uh, or in the same way as we usually do. We at FCG have gathered together what we think will be the 5 top decks moving forward. Note that these decks won't be in any particular order. To start things off, we have the new archetype from Secret Slayers, Eldlish. Eldlish is in a way similar to Sky Striker, in the sense that you play a big spell and trap lineup and a main monster which the deck revolves around. Each spell and trap card, except from the counter trap, replaces itself by vanishing from the graveyard, which allows you to snowball advantage pretty quick. Being able to trade card advantage with your opponent, making them run out of cards, while you are able to banish your spell and traps from your graveyard to get new ones and replace your disruptions. Your opponent also often has to commit to get rid of your golden lord, as it is quite big if you summon it through its own effect. And while they commit cards to get rid of it, you are easily able to summon it back the following turn. But the deck's strength does not only lie in its ability to sustain card advantage. It also has in built-in disruptions effects such as destruction, negation, banishing from the graveyard, and not to mention their main monster has the ability to send something to the graveyard uh, by discarding itself. The deck has the characteristics of a strong control deck due to its strong resource management and ability to maintain card advantage. However, a big difference between this deck and Sky Striker is that none of your cards are able to access non-engine cards in the form of drawing. A strong aspect of the Sky Tracker uh, deck was the ability to continue gaining non-engine card advantage from drawing multiple times with Engage. This deck is also, unlike Salmon Great, not able to main deck such a big line of, uh, of non-engine cards as you do not have 1-2 card combos, but instead play with your entire hand. For every non-engine card you have, that is one less card that generates advantage in the form of replacing itself. The deck has seen some success in the OCG. However, they do have a different meta with cards like Orchest Harp Horror and Dragoon running around. In addition uh, to the OCG having access to strong floodgates such as 3 skill drain and Vantis Emptenets, which lets them hold their disruptions for the actual threats. Salaman Great is another top contender moving forward. Not only did it win the last YCS in Europe, it managed to avoid getting hit on the ban list. The deck is able to play with its 1-2 card combos and has the ability to main and side a lot of disruptions and utility cards such as hand traps. But the true power of the deck lies in its ability to recycle all its resources seemingly forever, while the opponent has to commit and can quickly find themselves far behind in card advantage. And if the opponent is not able to keep up, you are easily able to finish the game with a transcode and update jammer combo. The deck didn't gain really anything from the new master rule, but it still remains a strong contender sticking around from their previous format. Another top contender sticking around from their previous format is the Rockets, which won the previous UDS. The deck didn't really gain anything from the new master rule, as finding a zone for Borlo's Savage Dragon was there an issue. They also didn't suffer any great losses from the ban list, with the only noteworthy hit being that they lost the access to the Strudo, which didn't really matter for the deck. It is arguably the strongest and the most consistent combo deck moving forward, and is able to combo off with its 1-2 card combos, generating a lot of card advantage in the form of monsters on the field. Unlike the previous Thunder Dragon Danger deck, Rockets don't really have that many pure extenders, but a lot of opening hands will be able to make multiple pushes which are able to extend to disruptions in different ways. By for example making Heavenly Spheres early on, they are able to limit the impact of a Nibiru, as it flows and gives you a dragon from the deck. And in the case of them holding the Nibiru for the equip of the Savage Dragon, you are able to recycle the Savage Dragon with the Safer in the graveyard, making you able to make it once more with most hands. The deck is proving us yet again the power of the Guard Dragons and Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Dinosaurs is a deck which performed really well throughout the previous format, with 2 out of the 3 winning decks at YCS Vegas playing Dinosaurs 
as well as our own Jack Werma winning Swiss at Weiss's Utrecht with a deck. It isn't a surprise that it made the cut. Dodging the ban list and now being able to summon Exceeds monsters in the main monster zone, which opens the opportunity to end on Lagia and Calmatis together. But it's not like the deck even needed the Master Rule 5. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is one of the best main deck boss monsters we have seen in a while, and with good reason. There are also many good strategies for this deck such as with the True Kings, Blinding Second, or even something like Jack's Wild Mech Knight Shadow uh, Dino deck. Unlike the previous three decks I mentioned, the deck does not snowball or gain mass advantage in the same way as the others. The deck's strength lies in its brute force, being able to summon strong monsters and make big pushes. The deck is not as consistent either as some of the other decks, for example like Salmon Great. And for the last deck, we have one of the big winners of the new Master Rule, Shadows. Shadows, and especially Winda, showed its power in the last format. But now they are able to summon all of their fusion monsters in the main monster zone. In addition, with the release of uh, Anaconda, they are able to cover one of their previous main issues, which was uh, not having access to a fusion spell. The deck is able to set up strong floodgate monsters, such as Winda, and evoke Kaliga. And when you are going second, and your opponent has a monster from the Exo deck, you are able to fusion from your main deck with a dull fusion, accessing strong board breaking monsters such as Construct and App Cologne. Resolving a Shadow Fusion this way gives you a lot of card advantage in the sense that you have a big selection of floating targets which lets you search, draw and so on. It can also send stuff like Overtake Squatless which lets you add a double evolution pills. You're also able to push with your Invoked Engine with cards like Invoked Purgatrio. Magical Meltdown is also a really underrated card in the deck as due to your opponent not being able to respond on a resolution you are for example able to negate stuff on their field with App Cologne, destroy spell and traps with Dragon. But another strength of the field spell is you are able to use cards such as Twin Twister in that time frame and your opponent is not able to respond to it. Some honorary mentions which did not make our cut this time are the trap decks Guru and Altegeist as well as Orchist. Guru and Altegeist have been some strong contenders for a long time, but trap decks have an inherent issue of not being as strong going second. Orcus received many good cards to take advantage of in Dual Overload, making it another strong pick. Synchrus has also received many good cards during the Link era, as you never know what kind of strong Synchro decks might be out there, which yet have to be discovered. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like the video and let us know in the comment section below what you think will be the best deck moving forward. See you guys next time.